Guten Morgen zusammen. So today is day number two, and right now we are headed down to the Castle Gardens. So once we get there, I'll show you around and give you some more information about that. So, low skates. <laughs> and before we continue to head down there, I just wanted to mention that we had um, two glasses of wine here on our first night when I, I didn't film anything that first night. And this is very, very good. Um, what was that wine that I tried? I tried the most popular Franconian wine. Zilvana. Zilvana. It was called Zilvana. Um, and it was very good. And the lady working here was super friendly. So I recommend this place. Okay, you enter the Castle Gardens or the Burg Garten through this gate here, um, which is the Burg Tour Turm. <laughs> which is actually right by our hotel, so that's kind of cool. And then as you enter, um, there are restrooms over here, uh, free to use for the public. And you get some of the best views of the Tauba Valley here, which is really great. So if we walk this way, if you guys can see that stone building over there, that is actually the last remaining part of the Staufe Burg. Um, so the last remaining part of the actual castle that was here. So now it stands there as a memorial. And Staufe is just the family that owned this castle. So let's take a look around. I want to show you guys the views and get a closer up look of the remaining part of the castle over there. So right over here, actually right over near where the bathrooms are, here is already a really great view. So, wow, you guys, look at that. So yeah, as you can see here, this is the Tauba Valley. And <laughs> I keep saying this, but it looks like a painting that's come to life. Imagine the most magical fairy tale and then hop inside of that and that's what I'm looking at right now. It's beautiful. So now we're on the opposite side of where the bathrooms were and this seems to be a more spectacular view, in my opinion. So if you guys remember yesterday when we went down to the Doppelbrucke or the, um, the Taube Brucke, um, that's right down here. So let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. Can you guys see that? And then we walked all the way back up. So cool. Really, really spectacular views. I could probably easily Google this, or not so easily, not sure. But do any of you know what this was for? This is kind of on this wall thing. Oh, there's my cell phone. <laughs> but. I don't know what this is. And then right here it has a, a hole. So if you know what that is, comment below and tell me because I don't know, this is interesting. All right, so let's go ahead and walk over to the last remaining part of the castle, which is right here. And let's go ahead and get a little bit closer, get a better look at it. Okay, I hope the footage is okay here. It looks a little whited out to me, but um, just a little bit of a background. The castle here was built from the year 1142 by Conrad Dame Dritten, or sorry, Conrad Dame Dritten, Duke of Swabia, and since 1138, German king, member of the leading aristocratic family of Hohenstaufen, an imperial castle and one of the largest of its time. So, that's interesting. All right, so here we are. The last bit of Stauffenburg. Really neat. Yeah, so like I said earlier, this now stands as a memorial. And man, the 1100s. I mean, I can't even figure that in my brain, how old that is. Really cool. Oh man, so this stone that's right here in front, 
The stone commemorates the so-called Rentfleisch pogrom, which almost extinguished the entire Jewish community in July of 1298, under the pretext of an alleged sacrilege by the Jews against the communion wafer or wafer, an impoverished but butcher or executioner by the name of Rentfleisch from nearby Ruttingen, um, Rampage strove through Franconia with the sole purpose of killing Jews. 450 Jewish citizens from Rotenburg took refuge in the former imperial castle from the Staufe period, but to no avail. The Jewish adults and children were slain and burned by their Christian neighbors. So, some heavy history. Hmm. But... What do we do with history? We try our best to learn from it, right? It's all we can do. So, yeah. Yeah, my husband said it's important to not forget about these things. You can even walk up over here. Oh, it's a little dark. I'm sorry, guys. I tried to adjust the the white balance, but it's not being very cooperative with me. I mean, we are walking inside of a building that was built in the 1100s. And it looks like we're allowed to keep going up. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, guys. Should I continue the shot here? My husband and I were like, we're not gonna do any more steps. And here we are. Oh my God, doing more steps. <laughs> I hope this is structurally sound. Yeah. That's pretty incredible. So now we're just enjoying the rest of the garden area. Now I think I read that this house here used to be home to the gardening society or something of Rotenburg up der Taube some kind of gardening organization here I don't know if someone still lives there it's possible looks pretty cool though <laughs> here's another view of the house over here oh cool all right one more Spectacular view before we leave the castle gardens here. Can hear water rushing. Oh yeah, do you guys see that? Look at that fun house down there. <laughs> My husband went, oh look, it's a tree. <laughs> Still nice views. We like trees, don't we? Yep. All right, Whoa, ooh, a bee flew into my face. All right. So let's go to the next thing that we have planned. We have a couple things planned today. Okay, before we leave, I was just looking at another view over here and I found one of these um, this famous houses in Rotenburg. Do you guys see that little white house on top of this kind of concrete thing? So I looked it up. That's the mayor's house at the tower. Um, I'll put the German thing on the screen. Sorry, I'm trying to hold the camera steady. So, it's one of the most unusual buildings in Rotenburg ob der Taube, which is a two-story residential building. Since the house was built outside the city walls in the valley of the Taube River, the lower tower served as protection during wars. The house was built in 1388 for Heinrich Topple, who was the mayor of Rotenburg ob der Taube for a long time. The building looks very distinctive and original. Um, 
and everything is preserved from the centuries from when it was built. So it takes half an hour to reach the mayor's house from the city walls, crossing the river on the Dappelbrücke, which is also a tourist attraction. So would you look at that? I don't know if we're going to go all the way down there today. Maybe. Maybe we will. We'll think about it. Okay, so we do want to go down to the mayor's house or the Tapla Schlusschen. Um, but first we're going to go to the Rotenberg Museum, which is down this way. And I think we're going to go with the car down to the actual house because we weren't sure which trail to take. So we just want to be safer and take the car. All right, here we are. We have arrived. Rotenberg Museum. So not sure if I can film in here, probably not, but I will let you guys know what I think. I'm sure it's awesome. And then look here, guys. They have a picture of this house that I want to visit later. So that's pretty cool. That's a painting there. That's neat. Okay, guys, we are allowed to film and take photos in here, but they say no flash. Uh, but this was actually a monastery began here in 1258, so that's really cool. Second half of the 14th century. That's cool. Here's some more history about that castle we saw earlier. So it says since 1142, there's evidence of a castle, right? Which is what we saw earlier. Um, it was already damaged by an earthquake in 1356. At the eastern brim of the castle, some officials and craftsmen figured out a small city-like settlement. 4,000 before Christ. Actually, this says circa 100,000 to 5,000, 4,000 before Christ. So the stuff in here is old. Oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> So this was taken from a Franconian um, woman's grave and it looks to be like a necklace and she had a comb and there are some earrings here. That is really cool. And you said this was from 700? 400 to 700 after Christ. 400 to 700 after Christ. Guys, there's our house again. So Burgermeister Heinrich Topler lived there. That is so awesome. <laughs> Is anybody hungry? All right, so now over here near the marked plots, which is over there, we're going into the Historian Gewulba. So you enter kind of through here, and the door is right there. And we're gonna go look at the dungeons. Now apparently, what I read online is that no one was actually tortured here. So, but it's still interesting. Okay, so videos and photos are allowed in here. So this is what it looks like when you enter. Ooh, I'm so excited. I love stuff like this. this let's see what these guys are up to. Oh, okay. Just playing some cards, having a few drinks. Yeah. This guy over here has his makeup done. It's all good. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> My husband said he thinks that's the old city banner. So everybody's dressed up in their traditional clothing. This guy kind of has an issue over here, but it's a good thing he's got this dirty doctor hand to wipe his blood away. All good. <laughs> right to the dungeon we go. In true Jackie fashion, I almost tripped and injured myself, so. <laughs> okay. Spooky. 
Okay, it's super dark down here, so I'm going to do my best. I try to lighten up my camera as much as possible, but well, there's just a couple dudes down here chilling. And <laughs> let's see what this plaque says. The dungeon includes a guard room. Uh, oh my goodness. The dungeon includes a guard room, a torture chamber, and three prison cells. So the guard room and the torture chamber were used as an air raid shelter in World War II. Opposite the entrances, you can easily make out the emergency windows. That is cool. Okay. So let's go. And again, according to what I read online, um, no one was ever tortured here. I think they want to capture the dehumanizing effects of being imprisoned here. All right, so we're done with the dungeon now, and we want to eat here at, um, what is this called? Profumo, Profumo di Pasta da Giuseppe. Okay, I heard the pasta here is really, really good, so let's try it, and I'll let you guys know. All right, so our food is here. I ordered the ragu al forno. Ragu al forno. Okay, sorry for my pronunciation. <laughs> oh my goodness, it looks delicious. Look at it popping and steaming. <laughs> and my husband got the salami pizza. So, guten appetit. All right guys, so we are back at the hotel now. Lunch was delicious. Um, so I do recommend that place and the service was also really great. So that's always a plus. But anyways, I wanted to show you our room really quick. So when you walk in, you have a mirror right here. There is a wardrobe here. And then if we go around, I'll show you into the bathroom. And yeah, we spent the night here already, so please excuse our mess. <laughs> we did have um, room service come to the room today. There's the toilet. Yeah, the toilet is kind of in the shower area, um, but it's not that bad. Um, and I really actually like the shower. We have a nice rain head shower here. So that's pretty good. Um, oh, hi guys. <laughs> and then if we walk out here, you have a desk, a TV. Um, in this room, we have a nice view of the street outside. And here is our bed. It's like a canopy. Yeah, so it's really nice. And um, maybe on our way out, I'll show you the lobby. Here's the little um, area outside of our room. We even have a Rita here. <laughs> a knight. Ooh, spooky. So here is the hotel lobby. And over here is where you will get your breakfast. That will be set out right here. And then right over there, through that little archway, is the breakfast room. And if you'd like, they have some Schneeballen for sale here. Four euros and 70 cents. They're pretty good, not gonna lie. And this is out behind the hotel. So they have seating out here too. And a little garden area. It's really pretty and look at this well. I'm gonna throw my husband in there if he's being bad. Never bad. Oh, never mind. you wouldn't get very far. <laughs> You're never bad. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's really pretty. So anyways, we're going to the car now so that we can go down to this, uh, what's it called? Tapo, tapla, tapla schlösschen. Tapla schlösschen. 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 Okay, here we go. <laughs> okay. I'll get it. I just have to practice maybe 100 times. All right, guys, we made it. So we're going to go ahead and walk over there. I'm going to give you a little bit of history about this place and, of course, show you more up close what it looks like. Oh, look at these little guys over here being all cute. All right, cool. Here's another view of it. And we're still looking to, to get to the front side where the little bridge is. All right, we found the entrance here. Um, so they are open. Here are the opening hours. It is, no, it's only five. Oh, six euros per person. So let's go. All right, here we are. I'm so excited. Now this bridge, um, 
it's not new, it's from the 16th century, um, but there used to be a pond around this to protect it. Oh, I'm so excited, guys. Let's go, let's look at the bridge. I wanna give you some history real quick, and then we'll try to go inside. All right, so I'm taking this information directly from Wikipedia, but the Takla Shushin, which is this here, is a small late medieval residential tower in the Taubertal, so the Tauber Valley, near Rotenburg op der Taube. So it's right outside the city walls here. I think it took us like five minutes to get here from the city center, right? Something like that. Um, so this was built by Rotenburg Mayor Heinrich Topla in 1388 as a summer house in the style of a so-called Via House. So Heinrich Topla was the most important mayor of the free imperial city of Rotenburg. He held his office intermittently from 1373 to 1407. So in 1388, he was elected one of the four captains of the Swabian League of Cities. So, oh, in 1408, after an intrigue, he was arrested as a high traitor and beheaded. So that's interesting. Um, so anyways, yeah, this is um, a very cool building. So it's a fully preserved building. It's furnished with furniture from the 16th to 19th centuries. I'm not sure if they're actually really open today, but we're just gonna walk over there and see. But I think it might be closed, so let's go see. Okay, so it looks like you need to ring the bell. So I'm gonna let my husband do that. I hear somebody. <laughs> was also used to preserve it. Oh. So this painting here was used um, or was painted with the blood of oxen mm -hmm. and apparently with their gallbladders. Yeah, Oh, this is so cool. <laughs> wow. Look at that. Little study area, maybe. All right, so you can also sign your name in the guest book, which is really cool. And you get to use a special um, feather pen, <laughs> which is awesome. Oh, there's ladybugs everywhere. So, Jackie in Germany. Oh, there's a ladybug on my hand. 2024. Okay, there we go. <laughs> das ist die Wohnzimmer. Or the living room. Very nice. Sehr gemütlich. <laughs> so this was Heinrich Topla's last will and testament that he created in 1405, and he passed away in 1408. And his children actually lived in this house. In Nuremberg. Nuremberg? Yeah. Ah, oh, in Nuremberg. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so here is... Yeah. Schlaf. <laughs> oh, cool. Sehr gemütlich. Ich mag das. Und dann hier, maybe a sitting room. Can we walk here? Yeah. <laughs> just make sure. Oh, wow, it's just sehr schön. Und dann hier. Wow. A washroom? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. For, okay. Yeah, like a bathroom, basically. Yeah. Cool. Wow, look at this. We're driving back into the city now, and this view is amazing. And I highly, highly recommend to visit there if you are ever in Rotenburg. Um, that was a great tour. The lady there that gave the tour was absolutely amazing. She had a lot of information and she was incredibly friendly. So definitely do that if you're ever here. So today we are back at the Sankt Wolfgang's Kirche. So this was built from 1285 in the early Gothic style. The church was built between 1475 and 1492. So, in the late medieval fortified and pilgrimage church, 
with original furnishings, there are three beautiful altars from around 1500. So that's really cool. And let's go ahead and go inside. I think we can go inside now. All right, so I'm not sure if I can film inside or take pictures, but this is where you enter and buy tickets. So we paid for our tickets. Just so you know, you cannot come in here and take photos or video unless you buy the tickets. So make sure, um, don't just walk in here. <laughs> um, and then we also have maps available of the city for free that you can take with you. So that's really helpful. And also keep in mind, no flash. So videos and photos are absolutely okay. Um, but of course, we don't want to do any flash here. So here is one of the altars. Wow, looks very cool. Hmm. Wow. So this says the wings of the altar are painted in 1515. Okay, so the two side wings here were painted in 1550? Mm -hmm. Wow. Very cool. So to the left of the altar, you have the Kazamatin. So this is a fortified area, um, kind of in the basement of the church um, that protects against artillery. So right here, they have some information. So here we are at the, the left side. Um, the staircase leads down to the fountain of, or excuse me, the foundation of the church. The three chambers located there correspond to the division of the church interior with the side chapels. The chambers have loopholes and light slits. At the end, you come back up to the church via a staircase at the back of the building. So let's go inside. All right, so we're continuing to walk down here. Wow. Ooh. <laughs> A little bit creepy. But definitely fortified. Definitely fortified. Ooh, I feel like I'm in a cavern. Look at this little pathway here. Watch your head. <laughs> So up here you have the Shepherd's Museum, which is pretty cool. When we came around the corner there, there was a dog that scared me. Oh, here. I'm not afraid of dogs, it's just I wasn't expecting him. <laughs> well, let's check out the view. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's cool. <laughs> oh. Welcome to Bavaria. <laughs> it's a little bit of nightmare fuel. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's cool. Yeah, so this is just something traditional here that they do. These events. Cool. Okay, so here it looks like this is where they had the cannons to protect the fortress. There's another guest book here, so I will be signing the guest book. All right, another cool thing is that you get this book here that gives you all the information you need while you're walking around the church. Um, so that's really cool. Just make sure to return it when you're done. All right, so we decided to come down here to Unter den Linden. We walked down here and let me tell you, it's a steep walk, so if you walk down here, be careful, um, but there's also a parking lot right over there. So let's go check it out. They should have a beer garden here. Um, and it has good reviews from what I've seen. So I'm excited to try it. All right, so here are some of the different beers they offer. I'm gonna go with the um, Kella beer because that's from the Fass or yeah, from the barrel. So I'll let you know how it is. All right, here's everybody enjoying their beers. Just a standard Bavarian beer garden, I guess. Pretty cool. So I got my Kella beer. So here's a taste test. Mmm. Sehr gut. Sehr, sehr gut. Ich kann nur empfehlen. <laughs> So I'm really enjoying my time here. They have a swing over here for the children, a sand pit for the kids. 
It's so nice out here. Everybody's just relaxing and enjoying their beer and food. And I highly recommend this place. All right, guys, we left Unta de... <laughs> I can't even talk. We left Unta de Linden, um, which was the beer garden down there. Okay, we're almost done. This freaking path is called Kurze Steige, which means short incline. <sighs> Listen to me. That's not a short incline, okay? Lies. <laughs> okay guys, so we came from all the way down here. So excuse me while I go pass away. <laughs> all right, so we are ready for dinner. We're gonna try to eat here at Alt Frankische Weinstube. Um, so I'm excited. This is a really pretty street here. And I have a feeling the food will be good, so let's try it out. So we got lucky again with a table. We didn't make a reservation. So I recommend making a reservation, but we got this table here, yay! Okay, so our food has arrived, and I got the pork, yeah, the pork tenderloin. Mushroom sauce. Yeah, with the mushroom, creamy mushroom sauce, and spätzle. And my husband got, what did you get, the same thing? It's the same, basically, it's just chopped pork. Just chopped up pork. So, yeah, we basically got pretty much the same thing. So, guten appetit. So I just wanted to come over here and see Plunline at night. It looked really magical. I was kind of hoping the moon would be in the background, but you know, you can't have everything. <laughs> All right guys, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. Day two was so much fun. We did so much more than I expected. Um, so if you want to, comment below, what was your favorite thing that we did on this trip? Um, for day two, I think my favorite thing was visiting the Tafle Schlusschen. Schluss, Schlusschen. Anyways, that was awesome. I loved our tour guide and I thought it was cool. I don't know. But anyways, um, so yeah, that concludes our trip here in Rotenburg ob der Taube. I hope you enjoyed it, and I really, really hope to see you guys next time. All right, bye! Tschüss!